What's going on guys? Welcome back to Forza Horizon 5. Today I'm going to be taking you guys through my wheel settings because I recently posted a few wheel gameplays here on the channel and you guys have been curious about what I use for settings. So the reason why I haven't posted this video yet is because I was having that issue with my wheel being out of alignment and I was worried that maybe my settings were a bit too aggressive for the wheel and that's what was causing that issue. But since the most recent update on Forza, I've actually had no issues with alignment. So I think that was just a software bug or like a Forza bug. So we should be all set to share these settings and get ripping with you guys. So without any further ado I'm gonna stop this thing head on into settings and show you guys what we're working with so we're gonna start here guys on difficulty I have gone through this before in my controller settings video so I'll be quick here braking we have ABS off steering's on simulation for wheel driving for me I almost never drive on anything other than sim on the wheel traction control and stability control are both off shifting we have manual with clutch because we have the three pedals down beneath driving lines off damage and tire wear are none in case we crash and rewind is on for the same reason heading into controls here guys our input mapping is a little bit custom it's pretty close to the stock logitech g920 input map but there are a few changes so the big one is our e-brake here I do have a Logitech flight stick that I use as a handbrake so I have that map to a button on there I don't pull it I actually just use a button it's a little bit easier for me that way and we'll talk a little bit about that when we get to dead zones and things but other than that guys the only other thing I believe I changed in here I'll show you guys the whole menu is our look around yeah look left right and back our X B and A just so I can look around a little bit when I'm on the wheel but I believe everything else is stock I'm just gonna run through the whole menu just so you guys can see here but I believe that is the only set of changes that I made Heading into our advanced control section, guys, this is actually going to be the section that affects the feel of our wheel the most, so this stuff's pretty important. We do have vibration off, invert verticals off, mouse free look is on, although those two aren't really that important. Invert force feedback, however, is, and that's off. Steering axis dead zone is 0 and 100. We have our linearity stock at 50. Acceleration axis dead zone is 0 and 100, so is D cell. Clutch is going to be 15 and 90. Now, our e-brake axis is 56 and 100, but that's not really important for me anymore because I do use a button. I actually set these values when I was pulling the lever, so keep that in mind if you guys are using an e-brake that has a range of motion. You might need to set these up so that the e-brake's not triggered when you're just driving around. Vibration scale is going to be 0.5, although I don't think that matters when the vibration is off. Our force feedback is down a little bit from stock at 0.7. Now our center spring is all the way down, and the reason for this is because I thought maybe my centering issue with my wheel was being caused by the center spring being too high and causing like a misalignment with some sensors in the wheel or something. But like I said, since the game updated, I haven't had that issue anymore, so I'm just used to having zero center spring. I know it's probably not common to use zero center spring for drifting, but it's what I'm used to now, so here it is. Wheel damper is going to be at 0.4. I I felt like the stock value just felt a little bit too much like you were steering through water. We have our mechanical trail at 0.8, our force feedback minimum force up at 1.5, force feedback load sensitivity at 1 even, road feel scale is going to be at 1.4, off-road feel is going to be at 1 even, steering sensitivity at 0.5. So that's going to do it for all of our steering wheel controls, guys. Let's get driving this 86 and I will show you guys what this thing can do. Actually, before we get started driving, I do want to quickly run you guys through the build as well. Now, if you guys are just looking to drive this car for yourself, all the information, the tune, the share code and everything are going to be down in the description below but if you do want to build something similar or try it out or make some changes for yourself I'm gonna quickly run you guys through the build that we have here so let's go into the upgrade shop our engine is NA it's the stock engine everything's maxed out here for 482 horsepower we have the best brakes the drift suspension the anti roll bars we are running level 2 here for our chassis reinforcement and we are gutted all the way we've upgraded the clutch driveline and running the race diff with the race transmission here six speed I can't run seven or eight because I only have my eight shifter for wheels we're running a nice stock tire compound stock tire width as well oh Oh, I'm sorry, we went 225s in the front and the 215 in the rear. Forgot about that. The wheels you're going to find in the third section here, we got HRE P101s, and they are the stock 17-inch wheel. We got our front track width all the way out. Our rear is going to be level 2, and that's going to do it for our wheels entire section. And then we're going to head on in here into our body kits. Now, we are running Ings everything except for side skirts. There's only this guy here, which is going to be C West. Obviously, guys, our drivetrain stayed stock. We left it NA, and we left the stock engine as well, so nothing to change in our conversion section. That is our GT86. Let me quickly run you guys through the tune as well. So we got our tire pressure here at 24 and 31.5. Our gearing definitely the NTNS drift graph. <laughs> Alignment's going to be negative 5 and negative 2.5 for camber. We got 1.5 out and 0.8 out for tow. We got that max caster as always. Our anti-rolls are going to be 41 and 13. Springs are pretty much stock, I believe. 575.3 and 521.4. Bottomed out all the way for height. Our damping section is stock, I believe, as well, guys. We got our rebound stiffness at 12.6 and 10.9. Bump stiffness is going to be 7.9 and 6.8. Our arrow isn't affected by any of our body kit stuff. Our brake is at 70% for balance, 100 for pressure, and our diff is locked 100, 100 all the way. So let's get driving this thing, and I'm 
going to show you guys a couple tips and tricks on how to get started here on the wheel if you're not super comfortable. Alright guys, so with our build and our settings all squared away, it is time to get driving this car. Now I assume that if you guys found this video, you might be struggling with drifting on the wheel, so I wanted to offer you guys a few pointers, tips and tricks, as well as some drills that you can use if you are just getting started. Now the thing I really want to drive home before we even get driving is that drifting, steering and drifting is a mix of your steering wheel and your throttle and brake. Your steering wheel directs where the car is going to go and your throttle and brake really determine if the car is going to get there, if that makes any sense. So your steering wheels are going to direct where the car wants to go. If I want to go to the left, I'm going to steer to the left. But whether or not the car grips up or spins out is completely dependent on how much throttle and brake you're using. So there is a point that you want to find that I call the golden zone of throttle, where you're in drift and you're not spinning out and you're not understeering. And what that takes is a lot of throttle moderation. So you want to be able to live at half throttle. You want to be able to live at quarter throttle if you need to without matting it and taking off, matting it and taking off. You want to be able to modulate nice and smoothly. So a great way to figure that out, honestly, guys, is just throw this car into second gear and dump the clutch. Rev it up nice with the clutch in and let the clutch out fast and throw it in to a nice donut hold the wheel all the way to whatever way you threw it in and you guys will notice that the car is going to start spinning in a nice tight circle and it's not really going to change its direction if I don't move anything. So if I just leave the throttle in and the wheel turned and cars don't hit me at the freaking festival, eventually that front left wheel is going to stop moving a ton. It might roll around a little bit like it is now, but the car is staying in a very consistent circle. Now you guys can play around with your steering a little bit here, like what happens if I just let go. You guys will find that the car wants to naturally center, which is a really good thing, right? So you guys, I'm sure if you've driven a real car before, you let go of the wheel, the thing wants to go to the center. But what you also notice is that the car is not driving in that same circle it was before, right? When you let it do its own thing, it's kind of going wider, it's going crazy, it wants to travel, it wants to do its own thing. So that's how your steering is going to affect you in drift, right? I'm still using too much throttle, the car's still spinning out, but now that I'm not holding the wheel, the car's doing something entirely different than when I, when I was holding the wheel to the left. So if I wanted to hold one of these drifts, I would have to use a mix of steering the car in or holding the car out and then moderating the throttle as well, if that makes any sense. So I'll show you guys what I mean. Here we go, we're gonna dump the clutch, spin it out, we're gonna hold the wheel all the way to the left again, and we're just gonna let it spin, we're gonna let it tighten up. Now what we're gonna try and do is just draw bigger and bigger and bigger circles, but keep it smooth. So I'm gonna let the wheel kinda go out a little bit and bring it back. Let the wheel kinda go out a little bit and bring it back. Let the wheel go out a little bit and bring it back. And although the car wants to go out wider, it's still spinning out. Why is that? too much throttle. Remember when I said earlier that your throttle determines whether or not you spin out and so do traffic cars? That's why the car is spinning out. You still have too much throttle. So now that I'm starting to play with my steering a little bit while I'm spinning, and get the car spinning again here. So the car's doing a nice donut and I know that now I can use my steering to start to walk out a little bit wider but my car is still spinning out. I'm gonna start letting up on the throttle a little bit as I try that, right? And now I'm getting a slightly wider circle there we go. I hit the golden zone for a second, and I'm going to work into it until I'm just drawing a bigger circle. Now you guys will notice my wheels are actually pointed out the opposite direction, and that's what's called the counter steer. And you guys will kind of find that as you go wider and wider and wider, you're going to start to settle into that counter steer really, really nicely. And so what you want is a nice, like that, nice smooth throttle and just a little bit of steering input. And I spun it out, man. It's tough to do. So that's really, if you can do this and hold a nice, smooth, consistent circle where you're changing the size of it, that is drifting. It, you just, you do it in different gears for different corners, but that is really what you're trying to do is find that mix of your steering and your throttle that allows you full control over the car. So once again, guys, I'm going to throw it into second. I'm going to hold it all the way to the left and let it spin nice and tight. Let it do its thing. And then I'm just going to start to let up off my throttle. Let the car kind of counter steer. Let it do its thing. Just feel it out. Maybe I'll steer out to the right and see, like, that's how you transition, right? Let off the throttle and see if I can hold a nice circle. And maybe even, like, wall tap the edges of the of the festival, right? And so I'm feeling that nice counter steer now. I turn it in a little bit, back out. So that's my steering, right? But my throttle is also nice and easy, so I'm not spinning the car out. So the car can spin out if I hold the wheel too far to the left too long with half throttle or if I have the wheel right and give it too much throttle. So you have to find the right balance. And honestly, guys, I know that sounds confusing. The only way to get this to be muscle memory is seat time. You have to drive, you have to drive a whole bunch, you have to spin out a bunch, you have to crash a bunch, and eventually something just clicks and you start to feel it. And it really is, it's more of a feeling than anything else. It's hard to be educational about it when really I think you just gotta, you gotta drive and drive and drive until eventually you're feeling nice and, uh, nice and comfortable. And so another tip I do want to give you guys real quick though, is if you are going in a little too hot, like if I'm coming in super hot, I'll throw the clutch in to kill my power. 
and just let it coast until I'm ready to get back on the power and then I'll clutch kick it again like as if I'm starting the drift at the very beginning and so that's really helpful too but it really is it's a mix of throttle and steering guys so make sure that you guys keep that in mind if you're spinning out it might not be your steering that's the problem it might be that you gave it too much throttle and if you're gripping up it might be that you didn't give it enough steering so try a combination of different things and eventually it's gonna click for you guys so what I'm gonna do real quickly is just kind of freestyle around and see where some of this stuff applies here so like that's a turn in like we were starting our donut and then now I'm counter steering hard at half throttle right and so that's my moderation for there I'm still half throttle full to transition on the brake a little bit I'll get I think I'll probably touch on if you guys want some how to drift on wheel videos let me know down in the comments and I'll touch on like left foot braking and all of that and some of those but that was full throttle right for a little bit because the car settled nice uh, that needed a lot of steering correction because I didn't have the angle of the car right and so there's so many little different Scenarios, I think that a lot of people get frustrated too easily with drifting And the reason I say that is because there's so many little different scenarios that require little different techniques that you just you have to keep Driving you have to go through that hundreds of times and crash and make the wrong decision to get to the point where you're really feeling comfortable And so it really is a mix of a whole bunch of different factors guys don't get discouraged Don't blame the wheel. I know a lot of people too. They hop on wheel and they get all frustrated and they're like the wheel sucks I can't drive on the wheel. It doesn't feel like a real car. Well, it's not a real car. You don't have any g-forces You can't feel it in your body It is a little bit of a different experience and it's gonna take some time for you So even drifting in a real car like you can't just hop in and drift like Forsberg dude It's just not something that people do so keep in mind guys like any skill it takes practice Just practice 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 and you guys will get it So I think that is gonna do it for today's video guys if you did enjoy the video or found it useful at all feel free to Okay, I can't even use my camera I think that is gonna do it for today's video guys if you did enjoy the video or found it useful at all Feel free to leave a like down below subscribe for more just like it and I'll see you in the next one Peace.